So what we would hope, for example, that you all do is you make sure that you include in your stories that uh, we're not here, number one, complaining or nor are we protesting anything, because that's what people are accustomed to from black folk. We're always reacting to something that someone else does or doesn't do. We're being very proactive here. We're not complaining. Uh, what we're saying is that we need to call the village to accounts. You might have asked where that idea came from. Most of you have heard the African proverb that says that it takes a whole village to raise a child. Well, many of us have gotten accustomed to repeating that proverb without ever getting involved in the practice of what the proverb says. So we're saying we're calling the village to account. We're calling the village to take responsibility for looking out for our children so that our children in another generation will not continue to be found at the bottom of every one of these measures, young lady, that you referred to, the, to, to before. So if we don't want our children being the ones on the negative end of the so-called achievement gap, real or imagined, then we've got to get our children up out of that situation. And we believe that the best approach to do that is an African-centered approach to educating those children. You might also notice in the symbols of our school, one of those is an acorn. And inside the, 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 the acorn are the principles of the Nguzo Saba, which are character instilling principles. There's a reason for that symbol. We tell our children that an acorn is not simply a seed, that an acorn is actually an oak tree in embryo, that all that is required genetically to produce a full-blown oak tree is contained in that little acorn, no bigger than one joint on one's finger. And therefore, that represents them. Everything genetically required for them to become whole, fully functional, productive, and constructive human beings has been put in them by that which created them. And just as you need but to plant the oak embryo or acorn in fertile soil, give it a little TLC, tender loving care, nurture it a bit, it will evolve into an oak tree. Similarly, if you treat our children in the same way, treat them as what they are in terms of what they have been created, they too will blossom. And when that sort of blossoming begins to take place, you will see the elimination or the disappearance of anything that can even be remotely described as an achievement gap. Y'all got me on a roll now. <laughs> I'll let Ms. Uh, Smart, our principal, tell you whether they know or not. Yes, they do know. And we are anticipating a group of our children and parents starting out with Mr. Gay Yuka as he starts his walk. Uh, we're being empowered every day. We have people calling, students calling, uh, just anticipating this great walk. I'm going to be right there with Mr. Gay Yuka. Uh, from here to what's the next exit? I told him I'm going to be in the van. <laughs> I'm going to be in the van with the water <laughs> and the, the, the data as to how many more miles we have to go. But no, we are anticipating. We have a, uh, a good group of uh, parents who are excited about all of the potentials of this great walkathon. Yes, sir. We also have returning students who have graduated from our school. Uh, one of the things that we're proud of is that at our last graduate, uh, graduation ceremony, uh, I was informed that uh, seven out of the 11 first graduates of our school have attended college. Seven out of the 11, based on understanding the uh, principles that we instill here as it being uh, character building, need for education. One of those 11 students, that, uh, one of those seven that are going to college made up an extra year because he fell back um, just so that he could graduate with his eighth class. So the, the concepts of, of teaching the Nguza Saba, what we call mold your time, and uh, the hugs and the, the, the pats on the back we give our children that is a, a part of, the, of, of an African family culture uh, has put motivation in those students to become 
Yes, sir. And it's showing with the graduation of the seven children going to college. It's, it's significance, too, of what um, uh, Baba Hazard just shared with you, the young man that he referred to that made up, in other words, he completed a four-year high school regimen in three years. And he had come to our school as one of the most disturbed and disturbing in terms of some of the mischief he could, he could, he could cause. Uh, and he was a, a violent young man when he came to us. Uh, in about the fifth or sixth grade, I believe. Sixth grade. By the time he graduated from this school in eighth grade, his family relocated up to uh, Orlando, and that is where, based on what he was taught here and the change that we helped him to take himself through, that young man decided that he was going to make up that year that he had lost because of his misbehavior in the school he went to Westgate Elementary before he came to us. And so he took it upon himself to work overtime and extra hard to make up a year. So he graduated from a four-year.